changes everything. So let's see how they pitch the lanes here. I assume Venge sent our bottom, Lich and Morphling mid and an off lane Prepare puck. But uh, with the item builds, it seems it might not be that way. I think Morphling, especially when you take out the Elder Titan, inherently does well against what EG normally likes to do. Mm -hmm. They like to find man quite hard, and when you have a Morphling that can split push very quickly, or when you're getting ganked, you can survive the gank and allow your teammate to come and help you or escape, you could kind of run circles around EG if played properly. Yes. So... The supports here from EG, having Ogre and Mirana can definitely secure some ganks if they want to. And <laughs> there we go, EG sees the Observer Ward being dropped by VP Polar, and sentries immediately purchased by Mirana. They often do this, not buying the sentries, yep. and then seeing, okay, will we actually find some back. sentries? Okay, then I will purchase it, because else it's sort of redundant buying the sentries and assuming you will see some. So that's a smart smart little thing that a lot of people could learn from. I, I still think that people should uh, physically move the Observer's last sentries to their last spot on their inventory. For example, if you click on center now, it's like there's a odd yes. spot missing on the fifth slot. It's like, hmm, I wonder what that could be. Well, I guess. The battle begins. I guess. That's a it's fair like a, point. It's like a small thing, you know? It's, it's nothing big. It's a fair point, I guess. Yeah. All it's right. also customization, though. I mean, yeah. Maybe you could next level it. It's so like some people just like to keep even like items on certain spots as well. So I guess you yeah. could next level. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Next yeah. level return it. Like I always put something that doesn't have any kind of hotkey. I put it as far down the list as possible. Oh, yes. Always have my boots on two, blink on one, BKB on three, drums on four, etc. I could go on. <laughs> So I like listening to you describe <laughs> it. It was, <laughs> it was so was dreamy. <laughs> Blink on four. We were we were expecting the Lich Morphling dual lane uh, yes. for Radiant, and they're gonna run the Puck lane. So they they have a lot of confidence on DK Fobol's ability to lane against this Templar yeah. Assassin. Makes me happy. Makes TA happy as well. So, uh, or I guess the that's the other way around, maybe. But this should mean that Templar Assassin has a more fair chance to do well on laning stage. Question is how this bottom lane is going to work out. The Ogre Tide is very tanky, but Morphling also has a lot of damage on top of Tide, so... Hmm. Until he gets Anchor Smashed. Despite Morphling and Avenge being range heroes, these are fairly low range heroes such that... I would have an easy time kind of just walk in, tank a hit or two, drop an Anchor Smash and trade pretty evenly, if not coming ahead. Yes. That is true. And with some backup as well, he's not going to do that poorly, I believe. And it seems that FNG realizes this this mid lane is not always going to be the best for a puck. So he's going to deny creep on mid with his Lich. And might even just switch in here now to harass and bully the TA. We'll see. Or maybe rotation down to bottom instead. Yeah. Again, every time we see FNG or just his team to play Lich, mm. they always have this kind of roaming situation, right? I'm gonna go mid, deny two creeps here. I'm gonna go bottom, deny a creep there. PBD is gonna get himself a regen rune. Little's gonna come around. I don't think they're gonna get a kill. Frost Blast is off cooldown again, but. Yeah. FNG did deny it uh, as he realized he was gonna get stunned. So nice little cute play there, denying some of uh, what PPD can find. But he's an ogre. He already regens pretty quickly. I mean, he eats a tank. Oh, he has 10.4. That's a that's a good trade. Mm, How? Yeah. That is uh, indeed very nice. So last hit wise right now, 10 and 2 for Morphling. So farming fairly well on bottom. 9 and 6 on TA against 6 for 2. So TA is winning mid despite the help that BB Polar are trying to send. Although not, not as big as you would expect because yeah. of the Lich. Yeah. Still pretty good. And we see a very early bottle and boots from the TA. Yes. And that's kind of uh, the start you want. Meanwhile, TK Fobo is still struggling with his own bottle. Mm. I imagine he's bottle crowing. No, he's got nothing. Wow. He is uh, actually sitting at nothing because he went very confidently with the uh, Null Tower. It helps you last hit against the TA, but also delays your bottle, which is... Uh, I'm not sure about this. I think you would want to have your bottle by two minutes no matter what, and you can have that. But still, the null is probably more safe to go, because else, else you can find yourself getting out last hit so hard. So I'm deny and last hit at once. He's already getting out denied and yeah. last hit. 
This lane is very Yeah, it doesn't get any better as TA levels up and has more charges on his uh, refraction. Yeah, it's a very difficult lane to puck for sure. So VP Polar are struggling a little bit in this laning phase because TA is farming as much as the carries are right now. Keeping up with the Morphling and Ember. Oh, is this gonna be an attempt on Universe? Morphling coming out, has a level one waveform. The fish is strong. Yeah, very good stun there from PPD. He knows Radiant's that he has to cancel that. Is under Any reason why he has a level one waveform at this point in the game? Oh, uh, no. Actually, no reason. Level two. Uh, actually, Max is gonna oh. eat air up top. Max is gonna give up the first blood here. Not something you expect out of him. Generally very stable, strong, and offlane player. Though Zai also a monster on supporting and does find the opening, so giving his team a nice edge there in the first blood did go towards himself, so okay, he's gonna be happy on Marana. Could get early uh, early face boots on Marana as a, as a treat for that. To Wagger. Yes. You're a TA player, I, am. I, I hear. Uh, I'm a non-TA player. Explain to me how Refraction works, because I'm still a little fuzzy. Okay, Refraction just blocks instances of damage, right? Any kind of damage. Physical, uh, magical? Yes, any source of damage. Okay. And it blocks it upon it's supposed to be deal to, uh, dealt to. So, level 3, 5 instances blocked, and also gives you 5 instances of extra damage in your attack. And that's really what makes him so good, or her so good, lady. So, for instance, more play. Oh, the arrows! Oh, wow. so good. Oh. oh, he might just have... Oh, he will no. get the kill for sure. Yeah. He's dead, and... Uh, a courier. Yeah, a courier has <laughs> balls, man, just walking out. I mean, that goes back to the, the support Marana, right? Radio Even yeah. if the first arrow missed, that puck can't really do much. Yeah, and he kept trying. Yeah. He kept trying to get those kills and uh, land. So two arrows already uh, set up by Zai showing exactly why he's one of the highest rated supports. Yeah. And that really saved mid lane, or, or like saved, it really made mid lane crush so hard. And I he mean, keeps firing arrows blindly. Comparatively to what Jurax did yesterday, and oh. he also played the Mara, looks like? Yeah. I think I'd see Arteezy might be a little bit of trouble. He does have a double damage. Oh my God. The hits are real here. He's diving for the kill. He's gonna get the kill. He has traps as well. He's gonna just walk away. Meld, wow! What a dodge. Wow. Wow! Has to you, sit soon. Yeah. Uh, really nice play there from from Arteezy diving in and realizes that Lich, of course, not the best hero against the TAS. You just have one single nuke. So it works out really well, and the start is amazing for EG. So does uh, Waveform, is that a single instance of damage? Or yes. Does it, it is. Exactly. It doesn't go like goosh, goosh, goosh. No, it does not. The worst things you can go up against is like... Iron yeah. Shell from Darkseer, maybe. Mid is a lot of rotation now. Mag wants to do something, but even as a centaur. Isn't an urn good to get a, Oh, yeah. To get a good urn, urn actually got uh, buffed against TA, yeah. but it also changed something. Because if you're running away and someone urns you, you can refract and block their urn damage now. Mm. So while it's overall a nerf, yeah. it has saved my life a few times <laughs> as well. Well, you can also make yeah. the argument that urn's a good way to remove those refraction treasures. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's how it was buffed. Yeah, but the fact that you can use refraction to, to block, your block it also yeah. could save you yeah. in some situations. Yeah. Uh, similar change happened to Venomance's uh, poison, which used to eat your charges, but now actually de deals damage through refraction charges instead without taking them. Hmm. So same thing happens there. Or I guess the other way around, because now you can't block them. Either way, really amazing start here for EG. 40, 25 on Ember, 38 and 12 on TA, but Morphling is pulling ahead in the CS chart as he has uh, a good time against the Universal Model. We'd be seeing more and more Gushes being selected on TIE Hunter. It used to be like, all right, I'm gonna just get, get Anchor and Kraken exclusively. What's, what's your thought on kind of the resurgence of the Gush? It takes a ton of mana. That's three anchors that you're not using to harass or farm. It's also good damage though. 110 damage uh, on level one. Also lowers the armor on the target. So if you can get a Gush into Anchor, it's definitely worth it mana-wise. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just the fact that he has mana boots. He can go for this aggression um, and spam. If you want to rush Blink Dagger and don't get mana, uh, mana boots, then obviously getting Gush is pretty is pointless. Oh no, Psy gonna get caught out here. I think they're gonna just keep punching away at him and killing him. Yeah. They could ulti him as well. 
I can eat, can eat stay hanging out. Maybe? He's got a okay. TP. Maybe he will just be fine here. Well, all right, never mind. Fear is going to come about. They're going to just somewhat be afraid. And here comes a triple remnant in. They need an arrow. And in fact, they oh. will use that as a bait. He's going to TP out as well, Zai, making the plays. <laughs> by, by jumping, by jumping onto, onto the lift. <laughs> okay. Plan. Meanwhile, well Juan Fernandez gets uh, Shirley Finette in the cliffs here, but he's going to be able to jump away uh, the with names. the waveform. Meanwhile, Mag is going to be a receiving a little bit of help from Fear and walks home safely. Yeah. So, so far, Zai is just all Radiant's over the place and creating top. space, I assume. Jumping onto a cliff was probably not really intended there, but worked out well in the end. I'm still pretty sure they could have killed him if DK4 was just punched a little bit more, because he sent the orb and was not close enough. But maybe just running away immediately would have been the better choice if Ember came in and punished him. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. This laning stage already going so well for EG. That's a it's a tough thing to deal with. I think that DK4 have the comeback mechanics to fallen. secure the like 10 to 20 minutes i depend uh, oh. it depends on the timing of the point dagger puck mm -hmm. how many ganks he'll find with it and how quickly he'll reach the midas after because that's kind of the thing yeah and uh, obviously morphling what build he's going for if, if he's going for a fairly offensive like a lincoln shotgun build yeah. oh, never mind he's going for midas as well yeah. so they're gonna just weather out the storm a little bit and try to make a 40 50 minute late game comeback yeah so tia has drums treads Bottle and Magic Wand. I'm gonna talk a little bit about TA every now and then, but this is very good item progression. Like, before 10 minutes, having your drums is really strong, and he's gonna camp the runes. If you get rune control and can get a haste or a DD, that's very often gonna transition into a kill. Yeah, there was an invis on top this time for Zai. I mean, especially seeing the fact that there's a glove of haste on the Morphling. I'm gonna Dyer's say to myself, there's really no fighting power attack. on the side of uh, VV Fowler. In fact, it's gonna be yeah, a T power dive. He's, he's yeah. diving into, I mean, he forced out the coil. It's gonna just straight up TP. Centaur, though, can he actually get off the cliff just oh. tightly? Tiny bit off, but. Hmm. Okay, you force out the coil. Morphling has Midas. You're a TA, can't you just say, you know what? We're gonna smoke up as two or three, go into the Roche and sneak uh, Aegis? You can kill Roche for sure, but I think it's safer to just kill something first. Bottom lane, they're trying to chase down PPD here. Can they get close Little enough for a stun? They so have slow. the exact same movement speed. So nice oh, wave in the end. Surely Finan secures the kill. Yeah, but it looks like they're gonna lose a little bit. Oh, the oh. arrow! Again, Sai is just a sniper with these arrows. The Swedish sniper. Yes, the Swedish one. Yeah. Surely Finette got we, the wave. We have a lot of snipers here in Scandinavia. No, they'll, they'll walk back safely. Meanwhile, Juan is uh, bringing Phobos the, the dive. Yeah, and this is going to take the tower very Radiant's early as well, just by punching down. Attack. If they can open up Radiant the map, then as you said, Roshan is an option. TP out here by FNG does not want to feed kills. He doesn't even have boots, though. This Lich has not really worked out for them. Mag just goes down one more time. Yeah. I feel Max like level searing chains. The EG players are just like, wherever they go, they just find kills. They make it look really easy. They do. They actually do, and uh, that's what's so impressive about this team, you know, they they make a lot happen with every single rotation, it feels like. Has he max level? Has he maxed out the Searing Chains over the Slight of Fist? Because it's not going to do any damage until he gets a Battle Fury oh, really anyway. The Slight of Fist is normal to wait with, but just the fact that he maxed it before Flame Guard Max, mm. is, uh, that's more a flavor thing, yeah. and I just think he wants the three second duration Searing Chains mostly. Uh, so he can hold the center in place even right. if he gets level 6. I mean, I think when you're trying to hold it uh, for a hero like Marana to land her arrows, it's yeah, uh, as soon as I would yeah. be much better. That almost guarantees you the 5 second arrows. Right? Can we talk about the difference of the offlaners right now? Like, Universe has level 8.5 against a level 5 old fear. Yeah. He's gonna just jump away. Yeah. He's gonna find some coil repeatedly being used for nothing. But I mean, level 5 Centaur is really struggling and it's not that Mag is bad at Centaur Radiant's as well. He's amazing at it, but... I think it's the difference in supports. I mean, Murana getting a kill up top, you can't really Radiant's do anything against like Arrow into a kill, right? It's really hard to dodge that. And then the, the bottom lane, surely for having a ton of trouble. Uh, you know, thanks to TA rotations, thanks to the Ogre and the Murana being effective there. The Lich and Venge has not been effective. In fact, have they really had even had a presence in this game? Uh, barely, I will say, like, you have to rotate early with Lich. Normally, I think, if you pick Lich, you want to keep the lane static. I keep repeating this every single time I see a Lich pick, 
because static lanes is where you excel. You have the deny of creep waves, you can control where the lane is gonna be, and you will flat out win that lane sooner or later. And maybe if they dual lane mid from the beginning, they could have shut down the TA with a Lich Morph lane, I believe. Mm -hmm. But instead he was running across the map, and that's that's really gonna hurt you. Okay, this is yeah. where they can come back. They have Stampy available. Roshan is bashing on a Juan, but they just don't have any good lockdown. Universe has to grab just well. I think they have to spend all No, there's no Stampy to get them out. And little it's cool. actually a magic stick, but here comes the backstab from D Fear. D Fear. Wow. Everybody's gonna die and they just all need to run. Surely Finette will have another way for him in a couple of seconds. Seconds, but well, he might a Melt Strike could just kill him right then and there. No Melt Strike, not even necessary. Melt Strike? Melt Strike. The, the, the nice. Melt Strike. Uh, that was three for nothing. And now they can go back for Roshan. Yeah. I almost want to say that right now, uh, Polar is just so far behind that their Midas's won't even be... They won't even have enough time to how use their Midas. How often do EG manage to do this, though? Like, 14 minutes in, it's... You know, almost feels like standard to see EG with a 10,000 gold lead by a minutes. Like that, that's very common in these games. Yeah, it's really impressive how how dominant they are in the early game. And there's no reason they shouldn't be dominant throughout the entire mid game as well with the composition they have. Blink dagger on universe, of course. I'm just thinking to myself, how do you punish EG? Are they making any mistakes? Are they... EG? Yes. No. I don't think so. I mean, like, maybe it's too fast to say, but... Let's start thinking about game two, right? Because this game is... Uh... <laughs> Jesus, Lumi. I mean, yeah. if, if you look at this game, the Puck doesn't have blink. The Centaur doesn't have blink. The Morphling Midas is going to take a lot of time to actually come in. Arrow, not going to hit. Yeah, does not connect this time. Like, well, what, what makes EG so good in this game, and how can you punish it? Well, they just won the lanes really hard, and to be honest, I don't think that they had the tools to win the lane so hard. It's more like VP Polar didn't get the lanes they wanted. So, I, I guess a little bit of the draft, a little bit of the lane predictions. Mm, also, Vengeful, in general, the way VP Polar often play, and the way EG also use Vengeful, it works out really amazingly. But in this game, it didn't do anything. They didn't decide to go for the Vengeful Centaur lane. Instead, the Vengeful Morphling, which is not that impressive in killing potential. I think they would have gotten more luck if they just had, like, Venge Centaur on top lane, along with Lich Morphling mid and Puck safe lane. Because I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you. as well. I, I didn't like the the lit as much as I loved it. So I don't I don't really think it's worked at all for them. Yeah. Well, I think it's more about how they ran Radiant's it than, yeah, than the hero not attack. being. I thought good. Lich Morphling would have done fine on the mid lane, but yeah, because Lich is a hero, probably one of the strongest hero at winning lanes, and that's where it went wrong. They lost the lanes, so. Yep. Either way, right now, EG are just securing tons and tons of advantage every minute that passes, because they're farming Ancients with Tide, they have room control perfectly for the TA, Dyer's Morphling or the Emispirit is farming tons as well. And uh, of course, even Marana is getting quite a bit of gold on her now with the Medallion Treads and 980. Yeah, so, the, so. Right, so the moment the laning phase is over and Lich has to start wandering around, Arrow attempt here with the. I mean, this is pace. why you max the chain first, right? For this purpose alone, they're gonna get another kill. Wow. That was that was a textbook on how to combo these two heroes. Yeah. So anyway, the moment that Lich has to start wandering around, what, what is he gonna contribute compared to say Ogre and Marana in this game? Very little. I mean, maybe if you get some nice coil and you can throw a chain frost in there, but EG have also reacted Radiant very well to the coils. They have Ember who can jump away. TA previously TP'd out from the coil. They never really get caught with anyone more. You know, it's just single hero yeah. coils anyway. So I also think that the thing with even if you land a good coil, the the way the lich ult works means it might just bugger off to the creep wave anyway. Oh God, he has a desolator. 17 minutes, 30 seconds, desolator on TA. Alright, Lumi, game two. Talk. <laughs> I mean, let's talk about why Deso is good here. Obviously yeah. it's good at hitting buildings, but 
Uh, inherent strength about the Deso is you could actually push it very, very quickly. It you does... could two hit an uh, entire wave, right? Okay, so a nice thing for Deso specifically in this game, as it's a TA we're mentioning, is that you're reducing armor on the target that you are punching, yep. which is nice. You can do that with Mel Strike as well. You're already stacking up tons of minus armor there. Oh, top. A little bit of a dive here by Fear, but once again, it's going to be safe with a far jump out. Mid lane also aggressive here on the PPD. Might get a kill, but he has CD on the wave. So. The reason it's so good on TA is sometimes you don't even need to hit a hero. Or sometimes you don't even need to hit a hard, high armor hero because you will sideblade people anyway. So if you're hitting a creep and it's sidebladed and it's sitting at minus 7 armor, you will have very little damage reduction and all the damage you spill is pure. So that gets added to whatever hero you sideblade. And obviously, I guess the strongest reason for getting a Desolator, Roshan is so, so easy to take. Not that they need it. No, because they have so much time. It's more like now she can solo kill Roshan in, yep. you know, 30 seconds maybe, while her team is controlling the map. So, just more more to their arsenal of EG, I feel. What yeah. do you get next on TA then? Mm. Probably a Black King bar to walk up high ground, although... B BKB is the item you go if you respect your enemy in this game, Radiant's which I think you always should. Uh, but Manta Star is decent, and crit is really amazing. Just a casual Yasha is a lot of value though when you have the drums and Manta style is it's decent because it app, uh, applies the the orb even by your illusions hitting something. I mean there is a world where Centaur blinks on you, there's a magic missile to follow up, there's a waning riff and a coil oh, that definitely. you can't die. So yes. I think you're winning so far ahead anyways. Just just slam the door shut, you know, get a BKB yeah. and then you could, you know, siege mid to mid tier two, siege high ground. Yeah. That's what also um, Ferrari rated probably one of the best TAs or the best TA in the world. What we'll about very you, often go, uh, go for the same build with the drums, Desolator, and BKB. No, I, I don't ra rank myself as the best TA or anything like that. She's I think just your favorite hero? Well, I'm really good at her, but I never rank anyone as best at anything unless they have one big tournament with it. Right, and, right. You know, Ferrari is the one who has the biggest achievements. Win a tournament before you talk, Waga. That kind of shit, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's common Swedish saying. Hmm. I heard it from Loda too. Yeah, that's why. Is it true that Arteezy's dad told him not to play Ember Spirit? Yeah. That's what Twitter that's, tells me. That's Tore true. Olsen with that nugget of truth. Attack. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Arteezy said in an interview that his dad watches his games <laughs> and <laughs> that after Star Ladder he was like, you should, you should not play Ember. Wow. You're not good at that hero. <laughs> Which sounds, sounds like a fun thing to hear from your dad. I mean, like, his dad telling him <laughs> that he's not good at Ember? He probably still plays better than better Ember than most of us. Yes. Right? Like he's still like I mean, very proficient with the hero. But yeah, God. Just next to his Templar assassin, for example. For instance, yeah. Not yeah. the same. Arteezy has other heroes. He uh, plays a lot better. I mean, Lycan, Naga Siren, hell, a lot of heroes PA. to be honest. Yeah, even PA. So uh, why not just give away give away the Ember to Old Man Fear instead? And this game, it's a slow pace now by EG, not too many kills happening. But they know that VP Polar are forced into this five-man Dota kind of scenario. Because if they go alone, they can easily be picked off by anyone. And it is going to be the BKB by, uh, by RTZ. Which means he can go blink next and just play extremely aggressive. Or go for Daedalus just to rely on his team to initiate and then run in and crush people. Radiance top Something to be said is... is uh, EG's vision, especially through the traps as well. I think a mark of a good TA player is that if your ultimate allows you to put play seven traps on the map, you should have seven traps Radiance on the map. Top yeah. tower just, it's just extra vision. It's eight traps now though. They buffed it. Dang. Pretty good. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, that's a 10 second BKB. BKB TPR is used, yeah. That's not how you want to lose your 10 second BKB's top lane. Attempt to kill Zai here and he is a little bit too far out. Okay. And a dominating spreak towards Mag. Very happy to take that. It seems like EG is not hurrying at all to start sieging these towers. Do Definitely you think they not. should be? Mm, I, I mean, think they're going for similar timing as they always do though. They try to wait up for that 25, uh, 25 to 30 minute mark attack. before they really add up the pressure. And they realize how much they could lose. You know, we saw, we also came one of um, yesterday. 
when they uh, suddenly just... Classic versus uh, PG. Yes, where they just threw away a lot of their advantage and, uh, you know, it punished him. Yeah, I imagine they're going to wait for a fierce BKB before they make any kind of decisive play. And that should coincide with the Roshan respawning. And they definitely will take it so quickly that there's nothing VP Polar can do. Yeah. But I say that they're going to take down T2 bottom without too much of a hassle. Yeah, Arteza is keeping a haste room bottle as well, trying to, you know... He wants a fight, definitely does, but he's also fine with just controlling the entire map and so is the entire VG. Looking at the CS chart, I mean, Tia is heavily leading away, even uh, in front of the... I mean, they're, they're, they're in no rush here, are they? There's yeah, no, nothing to, to hurry about for them. I mean, in, in some so. time you'd be like, all right, we kind of need to close out the game because there's a morphing on the other side, there's a clock on us, but if you look at the go graph, it has just been a steady decline. Yeah. So as the game goes on longer and longer, EG is just farming bigger portion of the map. They're farming more. Yeah, there is actually no hurry. Yeah, and uh, even Fear will go into a BKB on Ember, and this is really the we're not gonna throw the game, because he knows I don't need a crit right now. DK Phobos uses his orb. Is this gonna punish him? I think it does. Yeah, wow, wow, immediately God. dead. Mirana Invis allowing Artis to close distance. Two hitting. Yeah. Easy kills. So they tried to smoke gang during that time, BP Polar, but they didn't realize that Roshan was up, or maybe they just wanted to find a single hero as opposed to going into five. Because even if they smoked to Roshan, they could not have stopped it. Yeah, they would just die there. Easy tier two, no defending here. Yeah. Uh, They're still going top though to push that out. So far, another very dominant display here by, uh, by ET. Radiant's and what is the cat? Uh, like, fallen. what is the the point that VP Polar Dyer's can turn this game? They're going for attack. something with Black Blade of Alacrity on the Morphling. Uh, no man. I think you just need a very strong team fight up on the high ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, they have a ton of burst damage, so there is a world that you can burst somebody down before the fight happens, but EGPP looks like he's going to give a freebie to Shirley for now. Shirley will take any type of donation. He will. He will happily take Ogres. Yeah. Send us your weak. TA has crit. Yeah, Crystal is being added up. Fallen. So, even if you get a really good initiation now, as long as TA stays alive, she can just burst up Morphling so fast that he cannot even morph against it. And Radiant's even top like Centaur or any hero, really, if they get too close, that's why they have to fallen. sack all these towers. EG, though, probably don't want to push high ground too early. But I reckon they will do it soon, maybe when they have the Daedalus finished up. Because they do have an Aegis and it's nice to use that. So I guess your saving grace is you just look over to the Morphling and got your item yet? <laughs> got your item yet? Got your well, item yet? I don't know, man. And oh, DK Phobos gets scouted here, but he is a puck and very hard to solo kill, so probably just gonna get away. I guess so. I mean, what else is there really? They can land a massive combo, but Tidehunter has such an easy time disrupting that with Blink Four Staff, and he's well on his way to the pressure as well. Juan has the ages, walking at high ground. So this is what we saw the other day, where the Tide just stands at the back, yep. and they let the TA stand at the front, and they just said, like, okay, if you go in, you've got an Ember Spirit, by the way, and a Ravage. They're actually doing a very good job at not committing anything important and trying to burst the TA. If you can make her use her agent like that, you definitely have a good oh, chance. She lost but FNG, oh, FNG. She's gonna throw out chain, and that chain might even take the ages. No, the balances weren't there. They don't have an urn, do they? No. Okay, so he's just gonna drop the ages, I think. <laughs> he walks up and gives one right click for them, backs off. So they just still has plenty of time. I mean, poor, poor ages. Gonna have to die very quickly here. They keep pressuring, but Lich down, no chain frost, even less tools to work with for VP Polar. Alright, Aegis being blown, and I mean, tier 3 is low and, and all, but now you could actually try to take a fight, but the looming tide is just really the big problem here. Yeah, I mean, he, you can see him, he's in mission, he's just standing there and saying, hey, come at us. Please run into us. I'll happily ravage. 
So taking this fight looks impossible for VP Polar. I don't see any way that they can open this game. Oh, this, this fight. I mean, that's assuming you jump in and they don't use your They're BKB. The swap. Oh, the miscommunication. Shirley's gonna pop his own BKB. They're focusing on fear, but just just not enough damage. Oh boy. At least the Stampede allows them to run away, but they just lost three heroes again in the yeah. extent. It would not be surprising at all if GG now is called. Yeah, GG at the moment, boys, because they don't have to stop now, EG. Having killed everyone. Who's Morphling Effigy is that? Shirley Finette. Is that Shirley Finette? That says some Japanese. I, I don't know what, what the hell that means. So. Uh, oh, Coil. It's like, I'm the final god of death, I think. I'm gonna guess. Uh, no, I just played it a little bit. I studied Japanese for a while, but I'll take a while to go for it. I I'm guessing, I'm guessing something like that is along those lines. So. If the bowler wants to take a fight from this, I think there's no fight. Pretty sure there's no fighting. So they do get the melee racks and back off, and you know, the this was the. Dyer's this was the devastating blow, I think, to VP Polar. They don't have a lineup that can deal with losing Rax this early on. Yeah. There's no actual comeback mechanic, but they're gonna keep trying. So credit to him for not giving up too early, but we are talking about almost 30,000 gold advantage. Yep. That's the point where... This is this very good smoke gang, though. You see that yeah. creep wave really far up at the tier one, and you're like, you know what? There's and I a wonder how much gold this could give if they get a kill. If they get the kill, I mean, he's got Blink Four Staff and Kraken Shell. Here we go. We're going to start the fight on oh, There's Kraken, oh, Lily Frog, a swap, and a stun. Nicely done. Yeah. And the Chain Frost going to come through as well. We need to check. There's no fight recap, but I imagine that's a pretty right. big spider there trap. There's one. There. Okay, 1,700 gold. Nicely done. Very got a nice. kill on Tide. Earn 1,700 gold. Yeah, one kill. All right, how many are they gonna die here, though? Here comes Juan. Okay, I, I assume everyone uh, look for one shot on FNG here, he, very close he's got to the TA. Armor. Uh, dude. Okay. <laughs> dude, don't even, don't even joke wow. with me. Oh man. Did he get a crit on that one? I think he did. It was a crit. That's why it's so likely for a one shot. I don't think he can one shot without crit. Him. And there's a Gotta go down to fierce aggression here as well. There's a gem on the ground. Uh. I mean, they did get one smoke gang and they got a tower, so something their way. And losing two heroes for them is not even as bad as losing one tight hunter. Now, I was thinking frost armor is, you know, the dream right now, but <laughs> it's actually not the dream. It's a level two frost armor anyway, so the dream was not real. Five extra armor not gonna protect you. And uh, what did he actually buy? He purchased something else? I believe it's in his base. Oh no, the blink dagger is up. Yeah, the blink. I see. What's the what's the feeling behind not rushing that? Because I always used to think that oh, yeah. TA was like. I mean, blink. I mean, I get this question I'm sure pretty much all the time. Yeah, but the reason is that blink dagger doesn't speed up your farm. Yeah. That's the quickest and easiest reason. Oh, he's gonna go on deacon pose. Nice stun by little Hardy though. I mean, I think the like you said, the death set has made such a big difference. Yeah. Well, the drums treads into you know getting a. Death later, it just farms so fast. Accelerating your farm is very important. Mag taking tons of damage here. No, Juan is getting driven back a little bit. They need a center to heal up. Meanwhile, at fear just threw out pretty big damage as well. They can burn everything on Juan. BKB, Morphling deleted. Little magic sick Ravage gonna come out. Everybody's actually dead. He okay. gets called. A quick one at that. And EG convincingly takes game number one. Yeah, that was in an extremely dominant fashion, you have to say. And I, I feel bad for Dota Pro Polar, because their draft was not horrible, but if laning phase doesn't work and you draft the Lich, it's a little bit like picking Viper and getting stomped on lane, like there's no easy transition from it. You don't have the tools, you can't go double roaming with a Lich and Venge, it's not gonna get anything done. So in the end, 5 to 21, your score. That was